Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I welcome all of you in today's video which is about the extraocular muscles. So there are MCQs regarding the mechanism of action of extraocular muscle. If we know the normal mechanism of the extraocular muscles, we will be able to, to solve these MCQs. <coughs> so these are the controversial MCQs. A person while reading newspaper develops diplopia. A person while going downstairs, he develops diplopia. A person while reversing a car looks backward and he develops diplopia. Which muscle causes only horizontal diplopia, horizontal gaze palsy and tilting of the head. Now these are the MCQs that are repeating again and again and there are MCQs like these MCQs. Uh, but we should know about the basic concepts behind these MCQs. So what types of movements are possible in the eye? Suppose I am having eyes, two eyes. We are having abduction. Adduction. I will not go into the detail. I am just revising all the things. Elevation, depression, entorsion, extortion. So these are the basic movements which occur in the eyeball. So if we know which muscles and which nerves are doing these, we will be able to, to solve these MCQs. So muscles, how many muscles are there? There are six muscles, superior rectus, inferior rectus, medial rectus, lateral rectus, superior oblique and inferior oblique. Well, there are MCQs regarding these. These are very simple. SO4, LR6 and all other crane and all other by cranial nerve. So the extraocular muscle are supplied by cranial nerve 3. Except SO4, LR6, lateral rectus by 6th nerve and superior oblique by 4th nerve. That is the trochlear nerve. Now these two are very tricky. We will explain it in a while. Now here is the basic concept. When will we see the maximum action of extraocular muscle? Now the answer to, th to this question is if we look at the eyeball and if we look the, 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 the axis of the muscle, the maximum action of muscle will be there if the longitudinal axis of the, of the eyeball become parallel to the longitudinal axis of the muscle. When they become parallel, there will be maximum action of muscle. Suppose I am telling you, this is your eyeball and the superior rectus is attached to the eyeball in, in, in this patient. This is your orbit, this is eyeball and this is superior oblique. The superior oblique is not attached like this, it is making an angle. So the maximum action of superior, superior oblique or superior uh, rectus will be if the eye moves laterally. Now if it is if it is contracting, it will cause elevation. Now it can cause elevation in, in, in the middle also, but that elevation is not maximum. The maximum action of this muscle will be only if this is the longitudinal axis of superior rectus and this is longitudinal axis of eyeball. So when they become parallel, there will be maximum action. So if the eye looks laterally, the, the, the axis of the eyeball and the muscle become parallel, there will be maximum action. Now this is very important this concept so that we are able to, to pick the MCQs. Now this, we will study the superior oblique. Superior oblique moves from the orbit, goes toward the trochlea and then it comes back and attached to the eyeball in the superior posterior portion. <coughs> now if we see the, 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 the axis of the eyeball is like this, while the axis of superior oblique is like this. So in order for the maximum oblique muscle to, to, to work maximally, the axis must be parallel and that is only possible when the eye looks medially. When the eye looks medially, the longitudinal axis of the eyeball and that of the superior oblique muscle, they, they become parallel. When they become parallel, the, 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 there will be maximum action. So when it, when it contracts, there will be maximum action of the eyeball. <coughs> Another MCQ regarding the tilting of the head, that is also very important. Now the superior oblique is the, 
entorter of the eyeball. So it entorts the eyeball, it rotates the eyeball inward. So if these two are your eyeballs, this is superior oblique attached to this, what it does? It entorts the eyeball. So the entorsion of the eyeball is normally cancelized by the extorsion of eyeball. So normally the eyeball lies in the in the median position. There is, there is no entorsion, there is no extorsion. Normally there is we do not tilt the head because the image the images are formed in the central. Now if a patient is having superior oblique muscle paralysis, what will happen to him? So the eyeballs look medially which muscle causes depression of eyeball superior oblique it is attached like this the, 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 the axis become parallel it causes depression of eyeball now if you are having weakness in this muscle what will happen the eye will fly away the eye moves laterally in lateral position which muscle is causing depression inferior rectus but medially which muscle is causing depression superior oblique so <clears throat> when the superior oblique is paralyzed when the eyes move medially it will fly away so there, there is mcq regarding this that when you are checking a patient and uh, while moving medially his eyes moves upward while moving medially his eyes moves upward which muscle is paralyzed that is superior oblique now there is only one muscle in all the extra ocular muscle which causes only single moment that is abduction and that is caused by abduction neuron that's why it's called abduction neuron because it causes abduction so which neuron causes horizontal diplopia or horizontal gaze palsy that is cradle neuron sex abduction neuron a person while reversing a car looks backward and develops diplopia. That is sixth cranial neuron. Because when a person reverses the car, he looks backward. This, this eye can move medially because this is caused by third neuron. But this eye cannot look laterally. Sixth neuron is paralyzed. So he develops diplopia. A person while going downstairs develops diplopia. Now we know that the, the, the strongest depressor of, 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 of eyeball is superior oblique. When the superior oblique is paralyzed, there will be diplopia while looking downward. And when the person is going downstairs, of course, he looks downward. So while looking downward, his eyes, his eye will not be depressed. And if his eye is not depressed, it is flying away. If it is flying away, he is developed diplopia. A person while reading newspaper, again the same MCQs, he will develop diplopia. The main concept is. So I am explaining the, the extracular muscles in the context of all these MCQs. So normally the eyes look straight. It is neither entorted nor extorted because the net effect is zero. The, 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 the entorter muscle, the chief entorter of the eyeball is superior oblique. <coughs> superior, <coughs> superior oblique goes like that, it entorts. The inferior oblique extorts. Normally the, the, the entorsion effect of superior oblique is cancelled by the extorsion effect of the inferior oblique. Now, if a person is having superior oblique paralysis, what will happen? The entorsion action is lost. Normally, the entorsion and extorsion, they are cancelled. When the entorsion is lost, what will happen? I will extort. When the eye extort, <coughs> and this eye is straight, the image is form on the retina of this patient while they form on this patient they are not the same so the <clears throat> the mind is confused so there is diplopia in order to neutralize that effect what a person does he rotates his head when he rotates his head now he has actually performed the action of superior oblique by neck muscle so now the diplopia Resolve. So we are having MCQ. A person is having diplopia. When he tilts the head, diplopia resolves. Which nerve is paralyzed and which muscle is paralyzed? That is superior oblique. That is. Now a person will tilt the head opposite to the narrow and muscle paralysis. Because his eye extorts, 
it moves away when it moves away he has to rotate the head to the opposite side so if i am having paralysis in my this eye in my right uh, superior oblique i will tilt my head to the left side so there is a secure if a person tilts the head to the left side which side narrow is paralyzed of course tilting of the head is only in superior oblique and of course tilting of the of the head is caused by trochlear narrow trochlear narrow damage but tilting of the head will always be opposite to the side of paralysis now there is a, a, another mcq a person comes to you uh, with an eye look outward and downward i look outward and downward which narrow is paralyzed of course we know that this is cranial nerve 3 but how suppose this is eyeball if the cranial nerve 3 is paralyzed we still having two narrows lat lateral rectus narrow and superior oblique narrow lateral rectus will move the eyeball laterally superior oblique will move the eyeball downward so the eye look out and downward due to the unopposed effect of the lateral rectus and superior oblique so the eye look outward and downward it is a classical manifestation of cranial nerve 3 now there is another mcq a patient with an eye look outward and downward with pupil dilatation where is the problem that is cranial nerve 3 another is same mcq and i look outward and downward but with the normal sized pupil now there is a concept behind this if you take the cranial nerve 3 and take the cross section of that nerve you will see that the fibers controlling the size of the pupil lies in the periphery while The, the 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 motor function lies in the center so any disease that comes from the outside will cause problem to the pupil it will cause pupillary dilatation and any disease which comes from the center would not affect the size of the pupil now what are those two diseases from the center diabetes mellitus hypertension are the most common causes so if a patient is having uh, an eye that looks outward and downward with the normal size pupil you should think of diabetes and hypertension because the pupillary muscles they they are relatively spare now <clears throat> if there is something coming from the top and that impinges on 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 the nerve from the, from outside and compress it it will affect both the pupil and and the motor fibers to the muscle and the example for this is that tumor any tumor compressing on third nerve and the classic example is the supratentorial herniation we are having the brain this is brain this is cortex this is temporal lobe so what happens when there is temporal lobe tumor or when there is raised intracranial pressure what will happen that the brain herniates downward and impinges on the third nerve now that is the differentiating point based on just a clinical manifestation whether a person is having pupil dilatation think of something inside the brain that is impinges from the outside to the inside the patient is having normal size people but i look outward and downward you are having classic example of diabetes mellitus and hypertension so i think we have covered all the mcqs based on the extraocular muscles if you are having any question regarding the 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 extraocular muscle you you can ask in the comment section below so that i can answer